And uh, I think you guys know everybody here, so you don't have to uh, shake hands and introduce yourself. But anyway, uh, before I introduce our guest speaker for tonight, um, I just want you to uh, know what the program is for the coming months. Next month, we're going to have uh, Brent Rigger. He's the guy from the uh, uh, Porch Cactus. Yeah, Porch Cactus. There you go. And again, so if you want something, you should call him up and maybe he'll bring it to you. I can't promise you anything, but he really was a popular speaker. He's very, very knowledgeable. So he's going to be our next speaker in April. And in May, we're going to have a uh, hybridizer uh, who also um, collects plants. He's a former uh, Englishman who moved to Brazil about 10 years ago. And that's where he started his business and hybridizing. So we're going to have uh, the first look of his plants in, um, in May. And in June, we're going to have a change of topic, which is uh, irises. So I think some of you uh, probably collect them. And um, we've had this lady before. Her name is Jill Bonino. There you go, Jill Bonino. <laughs> And uh, the next one uh, will be our own uh, Geneva. I hope. <laughs> and she's going to be talking about epiphytic plants, right? Or right, epiphytic species. Plants. Okay. And Hopefully. You know what the word epiphytic means, right? Right. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about root analysis by Karen and stuff like that? Bromeliad. No. Are they epiphytic? Bromeliad? They are. Okay, well, yeah. see. So it's epiphytic it's a good cacti. Topic, and again, it's. It's a little bit something regarding what we're all about, but it's the same thing. It's a little bit uh, different. And what else? Um, I think we haven't really voted on it, but in uh, July, we're going to be participating uh, for the Plumeria Festival and also the Fern Society is having their show in June. So, yeah, it, it's going to be somewhere around here. Yeah. So those are uh, things we could look forward to uh, outside of uh, FF films. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm sure you guys collect plumerias like everybody. I saw everybody there, I think, two years ago when I was there. So. Jim Hendrick did text me, and he said that the plumeria show is open to other plants right. as well. Yeah. So it may be more than just us and them. You know more about it, probably. Yeah, they, this is supposed yeah. to be the 10th anniversary of the primary day, so they want to get everybody involved, our plant enthusiasts, you know, maybe the cactus people. Yeah. So it's going to be a two-day event. So it, it is going to be a Friday and Saturday, though. No, it's not going to be a Saturday or Sunday. Again, that was the change. Oh, well, you sure so, but I'll probably take uh, a vacation or more. Like Saturday and Sunday. Like it was the afternoon on a Friday. Right. And then it was all day Saturday. Well, maybe that's what it was. And but anyway. The show, um, show in May, right? Yeah, after, naturally. Yeah, the F our uh, show itself is uh, going to be in May and we will be here. Right. And there's an epic <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's the other thing, too. A lot of you, uh, there are several of you that is new. Uh, Epicon, you might consider, it's, it's in San Diego, and it's, uh, they're already taking reservation, it's an all-day uh, event, so you might want to consider that. Plus, also, they have what they call the Epi Collection at Wild Animal Park, and that's a separate uh, deal. So, But look into it, they're advertising and on Facebook, our uh, website, and also the San Diego newsletters, they're there, all the information that you need. And again, it's, uh, it's called Epicon, it's held every two years. Oh, yes. South Bay is having a meeting this coming week. Right. They, again, they have their own uh, society in South Bay, and uh, it's it's a bigger op uh, operation, I mean, in terms of, of a crowd, and they do pretty good in terms of sales and program, and, are you doing the program there? No, uh, Jerry's coming up from oh, San okay. Diego. Right. He's going to do uh, George French hybrids. Oh, okay. Um, uh, and the meeting time has changed. It's 7 o'clock. Oh, it is 7? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, it's, early, and it's early, held early. at the uh, early. South Bay uh, Arboretum. 
No, that's a South Bay's meeting next yeah. Tuesday. Okay, so again, as they have. Um, South Coast Botanical Gardens on Crenshaw. Yeah. Again, okay, you can just look it up. Okay, um, let me uh, introduce uh, Jerry Mack. Well, we, before you do okay. that, um, the strength of our society has always been in the, in the uh, volunteers. Um, and recently had to uh, uh, put upon both uh, um, Geneva and Jim who have long since wanted to retire from this and just enjoy life. So if you're interested in, uh, in, in being the event chair or the treasurer, please uh, uh, contact me. Best way is probably through, uh, the, through, through Jim or Geneva or through me in, on uh, Facebook or Jim on Facebook or... Uh, well, you guys uh, have my number, most of you yeah. I just wanted to say that, please. I'd like to, I'd like to be uh, nicer than we have been to, to people who have learned for a long period of time doing, doing work, and, just, and give them the ability to just enjoy what other people want, which is which is the best part of retirement, isn't it? It's well, it really is easy. You just have to know a lot of people, and be on Facebook, and talk to a lot of people. That's a, be outgoing. I think for a program person. So. You can't be in a corner and be to yourself because there's a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of information that other people have that you don't, we don't know anything about unless you read the papers or again, Facebook, Instagram, I'm sure has their own thing. And that's how I see these things. And I just text information about our organization to about 20 websites. They're going from anywhere from South America, South, uh, South Africa, Indonesia, uh, Mexico, and Australia. There's a lot of people who have interest in epiphobes. There's a lot of them. So, anyways, you, know, you want me to introduce uh, Jerry before you uh, get started? Okay, our, uh, our guest speaker tonight, uh, I think after like 10 year absence or something like that, Jerry uh, Mathias, we finally invited him back. And he's been around, uh, Jerry has been hybridizing and around FFLM since the 1970s, or started around the 1970s. And that really is old for a collector and a hybridizer because wow. our own peers have passed on. And here he is, he's wow. still around. And so he has his own history. He's uh, born and raised in Southern California. He went to Cal State, uh, LA. And one of the few things that I know of him without, you know, is that he was a former police officer. Nobody knows that except maybe a few key people. So it's always, yeah. So it's, it's you heard it here, at least officially, you heard it for, you know, here first because he doesn't talk about it. I don't know why. It's a beautiful uh, profession to be in there. And he was there for a long time too, but um, things change, I guess, for people. But anyway. <laughs> and he's still, are you gonna continue hybridizing to this yes. day? And the other thing too that I knew of him was, he was famous for these Mars. He started naming a lot of his um, uh, hybrids that's Mars related. There's like, I remember, I think there was Martian Kid Martian Sunrise, Martian, yeah. Lady of Mars, and Master of Mars, so on. And he'll probably tell you why he did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or not. Or, well, well, I'll ask, because okay. at that point, yeah, I'll Maybe let you tell the story. But anyway, I want you to introduce you to uh, Jerry Mathias. Thank well, you so well, thank you for the introduction. Um, before I really start, will you all hold up your thumbs for me? Hold up your thumbs. They're all green. We can get started. All right. Excellent. No, they're chocolate. If I stand here, are you all good? Yeah. Jeff, are you all, if I stand here? Sure. I have to have somebody to hold on to. I'm, I'm old, as Jim, as Jim says. Well, I would take out everything in that sentence. Um, I don't know everything, of 
cars. Well, you should talk about it yourself first before you start talking. What well, would you like to know? Well, where, what you talked about in your bio. Oh, it's just that I was born and raised in Southern California, and so I'm a California boy. And uh, in the little short bio that I sent out, my mother in particular was a real plant person. So when I was a little kidlet, I would go to the grocery store with her, and on the way back, we would stop at a nursery, and she'd say, pick out a plant, and you, you bring it home and plant it, and that's your plant, so take care of it. So that's how I got interested in growing plants, was from her, and um, my dad not so much, but my mother in particular. So um, later on when I went to Cal State LA, as many of you might remember, the Cactus Peat Nursery was up on, yeah, up, up close to the to the uh, university there, and you know, one day between classes, I was bored out of my mind, so I I found Cactus Peat Nursery, and just so happens it was springtime, all in bloom. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm I'm smitten. This is this is way too much for me. So anyway, I became a friend of the Peat family. And they are the ones who encouraged me to hybridize. Um, and they had a lot of uh, experience in that, in that regard. So it was really nice to learn from them. And of course, as I've told Jim, I've known most of the early hybridizers or earlier, uh, either met them in person or bought plants from them. So uh, that, that's about it. Then I moved out to the Inland Empire and I live in Walmart now. I'm almost at 3,000 feet. So it's a little difficult to grow epis. Uh, they grow like weeds, but they don't bloom quite so much. Do you get Drip. snow? What's that? Do you get snow? I, uh, yeah, we get snow once in a while. Uh, interestingly enough, Ripsalis like the cooler weather. And they seem to be able to uh, grow and survive and bloom and so on in, in that altitude. So this year is kind of a test to see how many flowers I get. Uh, be interesting, you know, to see what happens. So, um, anything else, Jim? Anybody else? Is that, that about it? For okay. All right. So let's let's do the first slide. I I think if I remember. Our techie guy is trying to get it. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry. Right. Don't worry. I couldn't help you. There is. Okay. If I remember right, the slideshow was mostly uh, my hybrids. Most of them, I think. If I remember right. Mostly yours? Mo most Nothing of them. Nothing here. Yeah. Or. Uh -huh. Here it goes. Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay, pollinating. So we want to talk a little bit about pollinating. So Jim and I and some other people were talking about the fact that when you put the pollen onto the stigma in the, in the flower, how long can you be assured that, that nothing else will pollinate that particular flower? Do you know how long it is? No? Anybody know? Three seconds. One minute. One minute. The reason I know that is I talked to a, an expert in, in pollination at the University of Chicago some years back. And as it turns out, she was using epis as her subject to test that uh, thing. So when you put the pollen on, what happens is there's a biochemical reaction that takes place. And after a minute, the flower will not accept any more pollen. Right? You can put pollen on, but it won't do anything. So you have a minute. So some people, as Jim mentioned, uh, uh, Evelyn and Daryl cover their plants when they, after they uh, put the pollen on to prevent any more uh, pollen reaching, reaching the, uh, the flower. Or you can wait, go out early in the morning when the flowers first begin to, to open, pollinate and sit there and wait and you know, keep away anything else that will, will light on that. Well, that's, that's what I used to do. But, okay. So some people use a brush. Uh, 
they take a brush and they put pollen on, on the brush and then they use that. Um, okay, next one there. No, that's, that's fine. Okay. okay, there's pollen on the brush. And as, as you know, some flowers have more pollen than others. Right, you know that? You all know that, right? Some of them have a lot of pollen. So, uh, it's very obvious here that whatever flower that was had a lot of pollen. Next. Okay, so this is uh, what you do, of course, you put uh, pollen on that very strange structure called the stigma in, in the flower. And you'll notice that some, some of the epi flowers have really long stigmas, they stand way out, okay? Uh, other ones are not so long and they will be inside the flower. So you have to kind of watch that, how that's going to work for you. Okay, next. Do you know if, uh, if there's any protection against self-fertilization? Well, that's the other, the other issue. Um, you, try to, you try to get around that by waiting for the flower to first open. Uh, as Jim pointed out, the the, ball, the pollen sacs don't necessarily open right away. Or mature. Or mature. So uh, you want to be fast. Okay? Get that pollen when it first is available and put it on there. I would say mo more often than not, you're going to be successful and not have to worry. Okay? Next. There you go. Next. Or you can cut the flower. Some people do that. Um, that's dynasty there. And um, you cut off all the anthers. They, they, you can do that. Cut off the anthers, or you can cut off the whole flower and use the flower as a, like a brush. And you use, you'll use the flower that way. But I, I don't do that. Okay, this is. Spring on Mars. If you're wondering why I use Mars, I was always fascinated by the Mars program. Uh, I love NASA, JPL, and uh, so Mars, not quite a few of my uh, hybrids have Mars in the name. This is uh, Spring on Mars. Next. Okay. All right. So there, someone's supposed to become <coughs> the pollen contributor. Next. You see, this is interesting also, is there's separation uh, on the top flower between the pollen and the stigma, okay? okay? The other one, not so much. <coughs> so it's more likely that the one on the bottom there would be, could be a self-pollinate. Uh, Next. <laughs> you can do that. See, there's several ways to do it. That's kind of funky, but... No, you can do it. Next. That's so juvenile when I see that. <laughs> and here's the other thing. Try to remember to label what you've done. That's helpful, right? Keep, keep notes of what you do. I have to tell you, some years ago, I had all my hybridizing notes in, in my car. My car got broken into and everything I had got stolen. So that was like, uh, you know, that's a bad deal. But label them if you can, uh, that's important. We want to keep accurate notes. Next. Okay. Here's one that was uh, Spring on Mars, cross with Dynasty. Okay, next. Okay, this is what uh, Evelyn does, is they, she protects the flower after pollination with, by putting a bag over it. That works too. That's a good, that's a good way. It looks a little funky, but you know it works. You mean to keep it from getting eaten, or? eaten, or or another. pollinated by another flower? Yeah. Next. Okay. See, that's what it looks like. Where else do they do this in the Coachella Valley? On date trees. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. They bag the they bag the uh, flowers after they're pollinated. Next. And you'll notice that after, after pollination, the flower almost always will wilt. 
right? You notice that? It'll, it'll wilt sooner than it would if it hadn't been falling. And that tells you your, your cross will probably be successful. And after a few, maybe a week or so, you'll see the beginning of, a, of an apple at the base of the flower. Call them apples, I don't know why. But anyway. Next. Is that what you call Okay, harvesting the seeds. Okay, here there's lots of different ways to do the seeds. And as you know, most heavy seed pods probably have 200, maybe 300, maybe more or less. The smaller uh, apples will have maybe 30, 40 seeds or less. Mostly on the average 200, okay? Some people mash up the pods through a strain strainer, okay? Next. Go ahead and do the next one. how the seeds get dispersed in the water, right? Okay, next. Okay, next. Okay, here this person, whoever this is, is mashing them up. That's okay too. Next. Somebody said a uh, mole. Okay, that's one of the dangers of just doing this method where that you leave the seeds in the, in the pulp together that it can mold. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily bad. Okay? In the wild, when the seeds fall to the ground without going through the gut of a bird or an animal, that, that process where it gets mold allows the seeds to lose that outer coating and drop to the ground so they can germinate. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily bad. Like a, like a tomato, very much like a tomato. Next. Okay. Next. Okay, now this person's going through a long process. Next. Okay, next. <laughs> All right, next. That's what I do. Bad, bad seeds or non-germinated, you know, 
remnants of seeds will flow to the top. The good ones usually sink, right? To protect them for you. Is that how it works for you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Okay. That's standard. Yeah. Okay. Next. Okay. Next. This is a. I don't know why people go through this long process. <laughs> because it works. <laughs> it works, but it's a lot of work. Next. And you know that little bowl you have them in? Yeah. The antiques roadshow, they go for a lot of money. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's How that, appropriate. Isn't that a Pyrex? Yeah, a Pyrex. no, not Pyrex, no. <laughs> no, next, next, please. It's a collectible. All right, next. Next. Okay. You notice that it is talking about taking the water away from the pulp and the seeds. If you take them out individually and put them on wax paper and set, set that paper aside for a couple of days, then the seeds dry out. And they're easy just to rub off and plant however you want. Okay? Your coffee filter. Yeah. The yeah. coffee filter works very well. The actually. thing that works about a coffee filter, your coffee filter does not, you know, uh, it doesn't mess up. Yes. Paper would just mess up. I mean, you'll just deteriorate. Yeah. And also, I mean, it sticks where you put them, and that's where it sits. It doesn't become loose or anything like right. that. You notice it says for drying. Yeah. See, that's the process you want to encourage. You want to dry out the seeds. Mm -hmm. Next. See, they're dry. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're dry. Mm -hmm. Now you can, now you can, you know, put the seeds where you want them, right? The other way to do it, if you don't have any time or any patience, is to chop up your seed pot in little pieces and just plant them that way. It works. It yeah, works. you don't have to yeah. wait. Don't you end up though with a whole bunch of seedlings in a tiny area? Put a pin there. Next. <laughs> Come back to that. Next. Next. Okay. I don't recommend this. Talk about mold in a plastic bag. No, 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 don't, please don't do that because th they're more likely to mold that way. Yeah. If you're going to put them in a bag, put them in a paper bag. That's, that's better. Next, please. Okay. Next. Oh, now we're going to get into something fun. All of those Baking dishes are the things that you get lasagna in at the store with a plastic lid and make really good greenhouses. As long as you put up some holes in them for water drainage, right? All right, next. See? Many inch holes. Next. Okay. Okay. Now, some people have asked me what I do with seeds, to, and this is sort of my little process. I used to mix up, mix up my own planting mix. Oh my goodness, that, that was a chore. Okay, now I just buy ready-made planting mix. Easy peasy. But what I do is I put planting mix in a pot, wet it, make sure water drains out the, the bottom, make sure the mix is uh, wet. Then put a layer, a little bit of uh, horticultural sand over that. Not sand from the beach. <laughs> Please. Salt. Yeah, it, not anything with salt. But just plain horticultural sand you can buy at Home Depot. Okay. W why would you do that? So you can see where the seeds go. You can see where, you, where the seeds go, A, very good. And have you ever experienced damping off yeah. with your seeds? Yeah. They come up and germinate and then fall over because they get damping off. Okay, that little slight layer of sand prevents that because it, it dries out just, just enough so that the seeds don't get damping off, okay? Because there's no plant material in sand. That's right. Sand. Then, then what I do is, is I plant the seeds, you can see where you're, where you're going to put them, put just a little bit more sand over, just enough to cover them slightly, wet it thoroughly, then cover it. Covered with some kind of um, uh, saran wrap or something where the sun can, where light can penetrate, and seal it. Really seal it. Okay. Go. Next.
Okay, see, so wet the soil thoroughly. Next. Okay. Now here, this one, whoever's doing this, doesn't have the sand mesh. Okay. And they may or may not get some really good results. Probably, probably will, but maybe not. Next. Okay, next. Okay, next. Now always label, next. <laughs> All right, there you go. See, it's covered. If you have it sealed properly, it, it, it'll miss. It'll it'll look foggy on the inside, right? Right away, pretty much. Okay. Don't put it out in the direct sun at 100 degrees. But put it somewhere where it gets sunlight. Um, you know, not too hot, but sunlight. Next. See, there's little baby epis. How many of you grow epis from seed? You all do? <laughs> You'll notice that the babies all look like little baby cactus. Mm -hmm. right? They come out with thorns at the very beginning. Then they go flat, as we say. Next. Yeah. Okay, there they are. See? Little baby epis. Next. There you go. Now, some people have asked, how soon do you fertilize? your little babies, okay? It depends. Some people do it almost immediately after they first come up. I don't recommend that because they're getting nutrition from the, from the soil mix. Wait a little bit until they've got, um, you know, another leaf or two. If you do want to fertilize them, give them something that's low in nitrogen and very, very cut, cut the dose in half or even, a, you know, one quarter something water soluble, very, very low dose, and then wait a few weeks. Don't over fertilize them, don't push them too much. Next, ah, there it goes. Okay, next, there we go. See, they still have spines. That's showing their true cacti uh, relatives. Next, seven months. There. Why do some of them still always have spines even when they grow up? Whatever their parentage is, right? Some of them will revert back to the original cross between epiphytic cactus and terrestrial cactus. Some of them still do that. You'll notice a lot of three-cornered epis have a lot of spines. It's okay, but no, you kind of don't want they hurt, right? <laughs> you think that's why, what causes the three-angle growth in something too, is something older? Yeah, they revert back. <coughs> Genetic, genetics and these plants, we call them epiphyllum hybrids, right? We just call them epis or epiphyllum. They're epiphyllum hybrids. They have been crossed in the past with terrestrial cactus. So that's why they have little spines when they're little, and sometimes when they grow up, they can have a lot of spines. Next. Okay. <coughs> Next. By, by the way, when they reach that stage, take the lid off and just let it grow naturally. Okay. Is this nice? Yeah. When they're about that size, take the lid off. Okay. Here's one of my first ones. This is named after my grandfather. So you'll notice a lot of my uh, hybrids have out of sunset as a parent. So next. Okay. Next. Who's uh, who's that person? That's named after a friend. Okay. Okay. This is named after my sister. <laughs> Mrs. Bursey was the very first one that I ever had that my grandfather gave me. Well, it was like a champ if you have it. Okay. This is named after my tax lady. Believe it or not. Nice. You must really love your tax person. I, well, she did some amazing things. Um, My experience with Serena Reese is that perpetually wants to die. Pretty much. Yeah. But Ginger Lynn, Ginger Lynn was a fairly strong grower, and so the two. This one, if I go back to that one for just a minute. Okay. 
I really love the whole issue of, I really like pink uh, flower. And this one, this is a, kind of a washed out slide, but if you see it in person, it's really pretty spectacular. It's really nice. Doesn't that right? Yeah, gingerlin, I don't think it's around anymore. It's yeah, one of the cactus I've beans. seen it. Have you seen it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next. Have you seen Serene Reese around? This is named after a cousin of mine. Uh, and again, was, I'm always curious why people, I mean, hybridizers name it after a certain person, so if you don't mind. A cousin. A cousin, okay. Next. Did it uh, spot like Greta Pet or? No. So good grower. Okay, this is a. How do we even have Ruth Wallace? Wow. Well, Grows like a like a weed. Yeah. I and know. Acapulco Sunset. Okay. The reason I like this one and they named it was because the petals tend to be kind of crimp. Yeah, right. That's kind it's of a nice neat. feature, I think. Mm -hmm. Next. Event Horizon. Okay. Another Acapulco Sunset cross. This one, if you don't have this one or haven't seen it, is interesting, but it tends to look like a cigar, like <laughs> rolled up when, it, when it's opening, right? It kind of opens like this, kind of unfolds. Okay, next. This is my very first and the one I really love. Anybody grow it? I still um, do you? I have to get a cutting of it from you sometimes. <laughs> this is another one that grows like a weed, right? I just love that color combination. It is, it's gorgeous. Yeah, thanks. You notice the stigma. It's huge, right? Next. Who is this named after? Queen. Queen. Princess Grace. Queen Elizabeth. No. Yeah, Princess Grace. Princess, Princess, Princess Grace. Grace. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Princess Grace and Monica. Oh, okay. Yeah. How many of you have Ruth Wallace? I, yeah, I think it's I have. It's an old one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this one, this slide is not really good. But if you grow it, you look closely, there's a little I think I've actually asked that before. Why did I get gold right, today? Right. Yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't show up in the slide so much, but in person, you it's pretty spectacular. You see it, so. Yeah, I was going to say I've never heard of that. That's one. an old one. Yeah, I've never seen. I don't even. Yeah, it's an old one. Seen that? I was far. Is that old? Oh, that's short. Sure. That's still around. A lot. That's a good. Okay, this is named after. We were talking about people uh, emigrating. This is named after a uh, Wendish pastor, Jan Killian. Okay? Okay? Jungle Red? Yeah, that's Where does that come from? A lot of people use Jungle Red. A movie. Red. A, mo a movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> jungle Red. Hold on. You guys are going through the country. Oh. This is another color combination that I really like. Is a um, different color on the sepals and the petals. This was very subtle, so yellow on the back and kind of a, I don't know, what would you call that? You know, just for people who don't know Robert Cuddle, uh, it's, those are his pictures. Either he took them from the Penico or from uh, uh, his collection and passed uh, about, God, four years ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really oh, miss him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He takes gorgeous yeah, photographs. You would see a lot of the photographs on his Facebook site, but they, no. they took it out. This is uh, Katie's Sweet Kiss. And who is, who's Katie on this one? <laughs> I'm not going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I, heard, no, I heard it was a, a, a baby or something like I'm that. I'm not going to tell. <laughs> this, 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 I love this color combination, right? So we have different sepal colors, and then we have that kind of a pinkish color on the inside. Next, please. Okay, this is one of my all-time favorites for several reasons. It's very subtle, Lady of Mars. 
okay? If you don't have it, it's very fragrant. No. It's like, uh, how many of you grow uh, Fusel Cactus from Cranston? Or as I know it in pseudo or salads from Cranston. No? Nobody have it? Very fragrant, very fragrant. This is not a really big flower, but boy, I'll tell you, when it blooms, it blooms like crazy. It grows like a weed. It's like, come on, really? It's like, don't grow so much. Okay, next. Leanne Marie is another uh, cousin. Again, it's Dark Star. Dark Star was a big, big flower, and Francis Heidelberg uh, was also fairly good size. Next. Linda Lee Yates is named after a friend of mine, a neighbor of mine who has now passed away. Um, it was Acapulco Sunset, there it is again. But look at the color. It's just that really subtle, kind of a peachy pink. And it always comes out that way. Maggie Hall is a, a neighbor of mine who's since passed away. Next. Marsha Bells, okay. Not, not a real big flower, but it's uh, pretty spectacular. Yeah, that's flowers. very pretty. I like it. That's pretty. Next. Martian Next. dancer. Okay, this is another thing that I like about some epis is the petals are thin. Right? Wheel. That's like, what we call it. Yeah, them. stand out like a star or a wheel. I really like that. This one is particularly nice because look at the stamens up as if they go down towards the center. They've got that nice pink color. And it is fragrant. Next. This is named after my mother. This, um, yeah. If you, don't, if you have it, it grows like a weed. Not a one that grows much. Like your thoughts on like, keeping something cut back pretty yeah. harshly. It grows well. Whack it a lot. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, you know. Most of us have limited room, and it's okay to grow epis up on a trellis, which a lot of people do that. It's okay to trim them. My goodness, some of these epis will just take over if you let them, so um, don't let them do that. You're in charge, so. Okay. Here, okay, this one, uh, this is also one of my favorites I'm growing at home, is Master of Mars. This is another one that will take over. It grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And blooms like crazy. So years ago when this first came out, when I first hybridized this one, somebody put a cutting of this up on eBay for 45 bucks for an un unrooted cutting. I thought that was just outrageous. So 45 bucks. Really? You should get a cut. Yeah. <laughs> they they sell like high, uh, yellow tangles. I think on Facebook it sold for one hundred and seventy five dollars. Not surprised. Wow. Okay, this is Mozart's ballet. I I named it because the petals always stay crimp like that, and I like that. It's different, right? But that's the, okay, this one I've been I've been trying to get back. Nobody seems to have it. This, this slide doesn't do it justice because those, that color on the outside of the petals absolutely glows. I'm sure you have some flowers that are like that. Where that color just absolutely stands out. Kind of like shimmer. This one's also pretty. Kind of like shimmer? Or? Yeah, they kind of, it's kind of shimmer. It's very hard to describe and very hard to photograph. Yeah, this one's also fragrant too. Neon smile. That's yeah. popular. Like neon, yeah. Everybody loves that head. neon smile. Yeah. Very vivid in person. Yeah, very vivid. It's also, at least for me anyway, it was a good grower. Very good grower. Clean, nice clean grower. Next, please. I didn't know that was yours. Okay. Party, yeah. I don't know if anybody still has this. Again, it's the thin, narrow petals. But look on the edge of the petals. There's that. Color that just glows, absolutely glows. And look at the look at the pistol. That's pretty long. That's pretty long. And look at the color. Yeah, that's kind of a washed out. 
It's like, okay, this is named after President Madison. And again, let me ask you, why, why James Madison? Okay, we were talking about yeah. families earlier, and somebody said, why is it all the men in your family, most of them have Madison in the name? So somebody did research, comes to find out we're related to Dolly, not, not President Madison. <laughs> Oh. Dolly Mouse, his wife, Dolly. But this one's really nice because the petals are very even. It's a very calming, soothing, what I call a calming, soothing flower, right? Grows like a weed. Next, please. How Another many of you popular. have this one? Everybody loves this. Yeah, I like this one too. This is one of my favorites. This is not the best slide in the world, but and if you grow it, you know that it usually has a white stripe in the petals, right? Is it fragrant? Yes. Yeah, it's fragrant. It's just a spiritually gold. Okay, this one, I don't know if anybody has this, but again, it's the edge of the petals that have that glow. I don't know what to call that, cerise? Would you call it cerise? Yeah, cerise. Yeah, cerise. Yeah, cerise. Yeah. 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 Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Next, please. Okay. Queen of California. Okay. Kind of both weird. Name. Was there ever a queen in California? No. no. There's Miss California. But now a beauty pageant. If you're a beauty pageant fan. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Round table. Okay. I think this is pretty obvious why it was named that. This is not a good slide, but the petals all come in a very even, round uh, configuration. Um, and again, it has that glow on the outer petals, edge of the petals. Next. So the motion, this is a, I thought it was kind of unusual to name it because, first of all, I love that color, but look at the pistol, it hangs way out, and it opens you know, very wide, which is very nice. And it had just a little tiny hint of, I would say, orange on some of the outer petals. And where did you get that name? It's Latin for, somebody tell me. I don't know. Quiet, you know, music, music wise, so the voce means quiet. Okay. Some of these flowers, I, um, they're, they're very calming to me. You know, they're very, the petals are very even, the colors are very even. They just sort of have kind of a soothing effect. Um, I've never heard of this one either. No. Sparkling chip. Yeah. There's that outer color, and then that I just absolutely That's love good. that brilliant color on the inside. Yeah, you don't see yellow with, I mean, with a pink highlights like that. Yeah, that's very interesting. I've never Ooh, seen, I don't remember seeing one. That's beautiful. Uh, that, <laughs> Is that another secret? No. That was actually named after a horse. <laughs> oh, I never did it. But here's the other thing too. Notice that some of the petals on, what do you see on the tips? That little spear, that little point, yeah. which a lot of them don't have. So it's nice to have that just as something different. Next one. There's spring on Mars. Okay, you notice Acapulco sunset. This is different from some of the other ones that may look similar because it has that edging on the petals that stands out. Spring on Mars. Next one. <laughs> See? Suddenly, I'm sorry, but suddenly on Mars. They look very similar, but this one also, this is not a good slide, but the, the outer petals tend to be more orange, and so it stands out that way. And then it has that cerise color on the you know, outer. The form is very different. Yeah, the form's a little different, yeah. Next, please. This one I really like. This is one of the early ones I did. I like the crimp petals. Yeah. That's unusual. I think. And then notice that the petals are pointed. Yes. And that little point. It's like they're pinched. Right, pinched. Yeah, like someone pinched it. Yeah. Next, please. This is named after a friend of mine who's since passed away. 
That's a very poor slide, actually, because it tends to be red, really, really bright. Isn't red. he also uh, Galen's friend? Is this the same person, Terry? No? No. Oh, okay. My bad. Next, please. Okay, wedding band. This is one of my early ones. What do you notice about this one? That's different. It makes it the petals open up and they kind of droop. That doesn't mean that the petals are, are bad necessarily, but they tend to grow that way. So the flower opens up completely. And again, it's that combination of color with the light stripe in the, in the center and the darker color on the outside. This one is also just slightly fragrant. Next, please. <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> How many of you know Barb, Barb Alvarez? Yes. San Diego? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Hold on. Don't go too fast. Okay. Okay, this one was very unusual, to say the least. Next, please. Okay. Okay. That one was well, there. Well, that's that flower is absolutely gorgeous. Multi-pedal. Yeah. Is it pregnant for you? No. No. How do you pronounce it? Okay, this is, uh, <laughs> if you know Mary Kroll, Kroll or remember her, uh, she named this after her husband. Jow, but there's that narrow petal and that iridescent color on the outside of the petals. Mary really liked this one, so she named that for her husband. Okay. She's still alive. Okay. Barbara Alvarez. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one, this one I like a lot. Why? Crinkles. Yeah, it's got the crinkling on the petals. I love that. It looks like someone took a thinking shear. This is another one that Barb uh, registered, and I'm glad she did. This is, yeah, this is pretty unusual. Dazzle, dazzle? Yeah, I've not seen this one in person. Okay. All right, we saw. Oh, we saw James Madison earlier. Now this this is a nice one. This is unusual. Look, what's so unusual about this one? Aside from the color, look at the sepals. Yeah, the sepals stand out. Next one. Twinkie. <laughs> okay, another Acapulco sunset. All right. Questions? Yeah. I, okay. So why are these guys uh, different people or? Where uh, have your hybrids? What was the story on that? <coughs> the story, I kind of know. Yeah. The story about that is sometimes, sometimes when I know people and we become friends, especially in the happy world, it's nice to you know spread out the the, the, the happy cheer to to give them seedlings or seeds that they can grow on their own. Uh, Mary Kroll, for example, uh, she got a pot of seedlings that I had, and um, I just said, Mary, I have no idea what they're going to look like, and I think she's, she probably registered two or three out of just one pot, and had about 200 plants. And I said, register a couple and then throw the rest away. So, one recommend, there's two recommendations I want to give you about Epi's. First of all, don't register er anything and everything that comes up and blooms. Because too many of them look too much alike. Find something that's distinct and unique about them, right? Um, and don't be afraid to throw a lot of them away. I don't know how many of you know uh, Dick Kohlschreiber? Yeah. That, yeah, Dick. Um, he used to say that a lot. You know, just, if you have 200, Seedlings in a pot, you may get one or two that are really good. The rest of them, just toss them. Just toss them. Put them in the trash can and get rid of them. 
Well, I think Evelyn and Daryl, they had like almost, they said about 10% of the things that they register are, are from, the rest of them are thrown out, which is about 90%. Yeah. As much as we loved it, because they would do the same thing. And I think one of those questions, they said, are you gonna register the case? But <clears throat> at the same time, they just didn't think it meets the quality of what, they're, what they look for in an right. ethic. The people I gave seeds, uh, seeds or seedlings to, I knew had good sense that they would register something that was different and unique, right? I didn't just give them to somebody off the street, <laughs> right? So, but you know, if you if you if you hybridize and you get seed pods, seed pods contain a lot of seeds, average about 200, 300 maybe, and out of that, out of that number you may get one or two or three that are worthy of registration or less you may not get anything yeah i think one of my first meeting with the esa excuse me was in 1999 or 2000 because i really didn't know you then i didn't know where a lot of these people are but i remember you were donating some seed pods or seeds yes and there was an auction they used it as a as a uh, on a, you know, fundraiser. Right. And I don't know, but I was bidding on it, hoping to get some of those things that's already done for, but I think I only had 20 bucks that night and I lost out naturally. <laughs> and I was just cursing myself because somebody else got them. And I think it was like three packs or something. Well, I might but There was a reason though why you were giving them away. I thought you were, weren't you going somewhere or you couldn't Well, I've, I've moved several times. And sometimes right. when you have over 500, you can't just take everything with you, okay. right? Right? You can't pile 500 FPs in a car and take off somewhere. I know, but the seed pods, that, I think that was the main seed reason pods, yeah. that you gave them to somebody. Right. Or, Here, here's something else I want to tell you about, talk real quick, I don't know how much time I have. Uh, how many of you have ever experienced uh, root mealy bug on, your, on the roots of your plants? Root mealy bug, yeah. No? pull your plant out of the pot and look and there's white fuzzy stuff that's root mealy bug. We used to dip our, you would remember, we used to dip our pots and our plants in malathion. Well that didn't work really well because the, the mealy bugs have a waxy coating and the malathion never penetrated so okay. But we found out, many of us, that mal um, uh, Saigon which was a, a systemic insecticide. It worked really well. So you used Saigon and on your plants and you had no, no insects. You know, the plants did really well, but no insects at all. And it took care of the root mealy bug. The problem is Saigon's no longer available in California. We took it off the market. It's kind of smelly. I told them the main reason for that was probably there was a chemical in there that was not approved because it was dangerous for the plants or for people in general. You know where they still use it? They use it on agricultural plots. I know, but no, no, maybe not here in California, yeah. normally. I think it's available in Arizona, Yeah. over the board. Okay, this, this is what I've been using. You can pass this around. Uh, Jerry Monroe in uh, San Diego got, got me onto this. Uh, you can get this on the internet. Uh, I think maybe some Home Depots may have yeah, it. They sell it at Home Depot. Do they? Yeah. yeah. This is good for a number of reasons. It has time-release fertilizer, which is low nitrogen, which was, you know, you hope for that. It has uh, uh, systemic insecticide, which is really good, because you don't want to kill your cats or your dogs or birds. <laughs> but it also is, is for roses and the other plants, disease control. So mildew, rust, and so on really good stuff and you just sprinkle some on in your pot water it in you're good for six months yeah it takes care of root mealy bug and I think it's bare but it's bare 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 three in one is the same uh, virtually the same product if you don't want it with fertilizer in it good German company thank you yeah it's really cheap if you do online yeah it'll last forever you don't need much 
done, you're not going to remember everything. It's just I've seen it before. It's a good off the shelf. Yeah. Easy, easy. You don't have to worry about anything. You won't kill your cat or your dog. It's got a high metal number, so this would be good to put on at the beginning of the year. Yes. Yes. All right. Those, those few epis that I've mentioned that grow like weeds, they grow even like monster weeds. <laughs> we'll put that stuff on them. It's crazy. Well, thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Long, yeah. yeah, don't wait another 10 years well, to come back. I'll be, I'll be dead in 10 years, who knows? Oh, well, you'll have a long way to drive to live a long life. You could be our next program person. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm good, I'm good. Anyway. Well, it's nice to see everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all here for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.